And welcome to Business Week, the program that brings you top business stories that made the headlines during the calls of this week, including special news features, market data, interviews, and much more. Welcome to the show. Well, here's the highlight of the biggest stories we tracked for you over the calls of this week. On the local front now, electricity generation on the national grid plunged by 849.2 megawatts on the start of this week. Petrol is also expected to sell above 340 naira per litre as marketers plan imports amid forex crisis. And in the aviation sector, foreign airlines stop ticket sale to Nigeria bound travellers. And bring you more on the international front, global jet fuel markets stay under pressure as more countries expand border restrictions to keep the new Omicron coronavirus variant at bay. Shares in China Evergrande Group also fell as much as 4.8% after its chairman trimmed his stake in the cash trap property developer to raise about 344 million US dollars. And in Japan, retail sales rose 0.9% for the first time in three months in October, though less than expected, and the underlying and private consumption trend pointed to persistent strains on fragile economic recovery despite an easing of COVID-19 curves. Well, it's now time to bring you some packages prepared by our correspondents. Now in this first report, the strike force units of the Nigeria Customs Service Zone A has shifted focus from import to identifying export violations as it makes seizures of containers of unprocessed wood and charcoal. Well, this forms part of the 301 various seizures intercepted between October and the month of November with a duty paid value of more than 7.8 billion naira. TVC News correspondent Ifanayezi reports. The coordinator of the Customs Strike Force Unit Zone A Amadou Shwaibu is changing the narrative in his anti-smuggling fight. The later shift in focus to export irregularities has resulted in the seizures of 61 containers of unprocessed wood, valued at more than 6.8 billion naira. 36 containers of charcoal, donkey's cane, a container of batteries that was falsely declared, and second-hand clothes, among others. The strike force coordinator says that the perpetrators of this crime are not only sabotaging the country's economy, but are seriously damaging the environmental framework. They pay our farmers, our forest, uh, forest management authority, authority peanuts to get this their act off. We, we are going to wait for them here. That's too long and they don't stop a peak. Come to think of it, look at uh, endangered species because of its lucrative nature. Because of greed, people have been killing donkeys in numbers. Reiterating the threat to biodiversity and ecological balance, the Strike Force coordinator warns that it will continue to effect seizures of these items whenever they trace them. The humans and forests and plants must live together. But this noble relationship, this robust relationship is being threatened by activities of criminals. Our role as a service does not end in seizures of goods and services. We equally have the national security role we play by ensuring the laws made by government are not only followed, but they are protected. Deforestation and the constant depletion of endangered species remain a constant threat to the world biodiversity, which is why the Nigerian government is being urged to initiate sustainable actions to arrest the continuous depletion of its forests. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. And now in this next report, the Lagos 2022 appropriation bill is scaled second reading on the floor of the State of the House of Assembly. The money bill is now committed to a joint committee of the House on Finance and Economic Planning and Budget for further scrutiny. Abimbola Agbebi has the story. Thereby totaling a budget size of one trillion.
The 2022 appropriation bill of 1.388 trillion naira read for the second time one week after its presentation by the state governor. Tagged the budget of consolidation, the governor said that priority will be given to completion of ongoing projects with 59% going into infrastructure development in the new fiscal year. This, the lawmakers say, is good news for Lagos residents. It is a 60% increase from last year's budget, which was 1.16 trillion. Mr. Speaker, sir, any budget that focuses on capital expenditure as against recurrent expenditure is indeed a serious budget that is ready to usher in meaningful and sustainable development. With road, education and environment taking significant portion of the entire budget size, there were projections that the merits of the money bill surpass its shortfall. The implication of this is that more hands will be engaged, more jobs will be provided, and there will be more food on the table of citizens, you know, and as a result of which the welfare of the people will be taken care of, roads attended to, hospitals attended to, and of course these are the basic concepts of Governance. The lawmakers were also quick to note that there is need for the revenue generation net of the state to be widened with lesser emphasis on borrowing in the coming year. What I think is having the budget is not just about writing it in the paper, but funding the budget is what makes it an instrument. Uh, we, if we check today, we understand that the people in the taxpayers' net today in Lagos State is barely 25%. And we have a budget of 1.3 trillion and we're expecting it to be funded by IGR and um, other source of financing. It is very important that we should look for means and measures within our capacity to ensure that our budget is being funded without excessively having to borrow or having to go look for it. We should look inwards on how to fund the budget. I believe that we need to look at this budget critically and only approve what we are sure can be made. If there is need, if additional money is made, the executive can come back for a supplementary budget. Shortly after the deliberations, the bill was committed to a joint committee of the House. Abimbola Agbibi, TVS News, Lagos. Well, it's now time to also bring you the feature on the show today. We are looking at the project Nigeria Air, the intricacies and the reactions that have trailed this development so far to go anywhere. Thanks for still staying with us. Let's now deal with the crux of today's discourse. The federal government says that Nigeria Air will commence operations with three wet lease aircraft following the executive council approval of April 2022 takeoff date of the airline. The federal government announced at the start of this week it has sent out requests for proposal to investors interested in owning shares in the proposed national carrier. And as part of the highlights, Nigeria Air would be quoted on the stock exchange, adding that Nigerians would be allowed to buy shares in the airline that would be planned to commence operations with three wet lease aircraft. Well, joining me now to discuss this and more, I have Chukwerika Achum, Chief Operating Officer of Jet Support Services. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Thank you, David. Well, let's now start off with a build-up of momentum of the project to Nigeria Air, the intracases, some of the reactions we've had following the initial thought, the idea, the suspension, and then now the commencement coming into focus with a takeoff date of April 22, 2022, with a wet lease of three aircraft. What do you make of the project so far and then the build-up of momentum? Well, I mean, the initiative, um, like I said, is... A very good initiative. Um, it's uh, a long time coming, and I do believe that uh, government has um, decided to go the way of the private sector rather than fully funding uh, this initiative. If you look at the investment, um, you know, sectorization, you will see that government has indicated that it would only hold not more than five percent. Um, of the total equity of the airline. I mean, that 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 in itself is indicating that uh, the government investment is purely catalytic 
and you know give it a lot of control by way of 49 percent to the technical equity investor and then 46 percent to the to the you know uh, public um speaking to the you know wet lease option i mean uh, a wet lease traditionally is uh, a kind of lease that um, enables airline enables airlines that are looking to either expand capacity in the short term or airlines that are you know looking to get off the ground very quickly um, however it is a little bit unclear how the nigeria air project is meant to get off the ground by starting off immediately with wet lease airplanes and now talking more about this wet lease aircraft now some analysts argue we could have taken a different route with other local airlines coming under the umbrella of a national carrier. And what are your thoughts on these, especially with some also saying, well, the idea of a national carrier now is a misplaced priority? Well, I mean, I do agree that um, if government is holding 5%, and um, it simply means that government has no controlling stake in this venture. Even if government has a controlling stake, government does not have the right technical capacity to decide you know the type of airplane the route structure or more or less the business model that the airline would run this should purely be the prerogative of uh, of the technical equity investor which will be bringing all of his expertise into this venture um, that being said um, i mean I believe the target for government is government is looking to target stage agnostic investors, investors who are willing to invest in, you know, more or less any stage of the government, any stage of the venture, more or less. And um, somebody has to make a stake, you know, and um, you, I, I think that government is still at the selling stage. So a lot of uh, this uh, public relations that we are seeing is uh, more of attracting, you know, prospective investors because we all know that Nigeria is a difficult place. Historically, government has not honored, you know, strategic partnerships. We can look towards the likes of um, of um, the Virgin Nigeria, um, even now looking at by Courtney. So government has not necessarily been the best uh, business partner. And then there's also the notion there, some are not necessarily optimistic about the takeoff date of April 2022 as a feasible timeline for the project. From training to recruitment of staff and other pertinent issues, and even the bigger picture of the fact that government with minority shares is also dictating a whole lot. By means of, you know, the technical regulation, the Civil Aviation Authority requires a minimum of 90 days to process an air operating certificate from the date of initial pre-application statement of intent until the day of the air, operator certif air operating certificate issuance. The regulatory requirement is 90 days. I have never seen, you know, or heard of any applicant that has completed that process in that, you know, um, minimum time. But nonetheless, you know, um, the Civil Aviation Authority is supposed to be independent from the Ministry of Aviation, even though the Director General of, you know, the, Civil, the, the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority is a parasitical under the Ministry of Aviation. You know, um, they are meant to, you know, show or you know act independently, you know, more or less uh, from the Ministry of Aviation as, you know, the number one regulator in, in the country. However, David, you know, we are talking about diversifying the economic landscape of this uh, country and we are looking, I mean, the call out has been that from sector to sector, you know, that we see, we see, you know, um, enablement, you know, government should more or less enable businesses, enable FDIs, enable, um, you know, um, private investments across all sectors of, of the economy. Well, we are also looking at an open bid here for the management of the airline as government has opened calls for investors insisting the airline would be run majorly by the private sector. Do you see this turning around the fate of the uh, national carrier once established and then bring into the fore the prospects we see in sight? 
So uh, I think in 2019, we contributed about uh, plus or minus 12% to the you know, nominal GDP of, of, of Nigeria. And um, the school of thought is that um, aviation can actually do much more. If you look at our geographical position, Nigeria is in the heart, you know, not just of Africa, but it's actually in the heart of connectivity. You can bring um, passengers all the way from Southern Africa and connect them to Europe. You can bring passengers all the way from, from Western Africa and connect them to the Middle East. You can bring passengers all the way from, from Eastern Africa and connect them to the United States. You know, that being said, we've not, you know, more or less um, took a, taken advantage of our, our regional, you know, footprint and um, you see Nigerian airlines have not really been you know major players on the continental scene talk more of the intercontinental scene you know we've more or less been local champions um, carrying passengers all around Nigeria without any real real you know productivity or, 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 or profitability so what this I believe I I don't I can't speak for uh, whichever technical equity investor will 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 come into the country, but I always I mean will drive this project. But what I do believe is that the, the aim is to you know propel the Nigerian aviation industry or cascade it beyond you know our current um, local footprint. We want um, you know to see Nigeria play not just on the continental scene but in the on the intercontinental scene. There is simply no reason why you know we cannot challenge. The likes of Ethiopian Airlines, Kenya Airways, you know, and all of the other success stories out of Africa. Well, it's now also time to look more into the area of uh, operational efficiency and cost cutting measures, taking cues from existing airlines and other new entrants and their strategies to stay afloat. What are some of the blind spots you expect the management of Nigeria Air as it's going to be formed to look keenly into? If you take an empirical look at um, why most of the airlines in Nigeria, I don't want to use the word failed, but why they've not been able to transcend their business beyond, um, you know, our shores is very simple. Um, first of all, it is on the part of government. Government has not provided the right infrastructure in terms of, you know, the airports to support the growth and expansion of these airlines. Nigerian airlines are typically arrival and arriving and departing airports. There's no room for connectivity. You know, there's no room to build a truly hub and spoke system. That being said, you know, the airlines have also not really had, you know, proper planning. And as simple as that sounds, David, that is more or less the uh, number one being of 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 most of the airlines in Nigeria. But um, taking a cue from that, I do believe that, um, you know, the first thing is that um, they have to understand the operating environment. I mean, I don't think that is something that um, they will take for granted or should take for granted. The number one, I mean, the top of the list for me would be understanding the operating environment, um, selecting the right aircraft to match the routes, um, putting the right people in the right places and of course government has indicated that um, you know it will support this venture by now privatizing you know the airports and allowing the airports more or less um, develop and um, support the business of the airlines so um, it looks like it is coming at the right time David we are having intersecting you know advantageous factors that will more or less um, look to you know, ensure that, um, well, not ensure, but support, you know, the growth of, of not just Nigeria Air, but, um, you know, any airline operating in Nigeria. And still talking more about cost cutting measures, we also have the prospect of the maintenance and repair overhaul facility in sight, as well as part of the highlights from the national carrier coming in. 12,000 hectares of land will be used for the facility. And out of that land, uh, which all of it is a free zone, there would be an MRO facility, a second runway, new terminal building, and various businesses. According to the minister, Hadi Sirika, it is going to be a whole airport city. How much of a driver do you also see this bringing down the cost of operations here in Nigeria? 
it's looking like a one-stop shop, David. Uh, with this one-stop shop, you know, it means that, um, you know, I I don't need to fly my airplane to, you know, Switzerland or America every year for, you know, annual maintenance. It means that um, Nigerian Airlines would be able to um, more or less reduce their dollarized um, subheads which you know has also been a major um, uh, a major issue with uh, the sustainability of airlines we've seen that um, i mean the macroeconomic headwinds that the country had, had had experienced between you know 2000 and 2001 up until 2000, 2021 in 20 years you've seen a massive devaluation of 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 the currency against against the us dollar so this has been um you know, major issue. I mean, there's, there's 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 no business plan that can, like we've said before, hedge for that kind of um, for that kind of uh, impact. Okay, now let's look at the bigger picture of aviation today in the country. We have also had issues around the cost of jet A1 fuel. This has been a major issue domestically and also a contending global issue. And now we have the Omicron variant of coronavirus. How do you see the aviation sector building some resilience or shock absorbers to this new uh, disruption? We cannot necessarily tell which way the pendulum will swing, especially with how things are going now and the uh, lock and the, the measures countries are taking. In your thoughts on all of this build-up, worst case and best case scenarios? I mean, the uptick in um, in the Price of jet A1 is purely, you know, um, factorized by the international price of um, of crude oil. Government has um, completely deregulated the um, jet A1 business in Nigeria, so you see, um, I mean, price fluctuations based simply on on um, you know the prevalent price of of of, of energy in in, in in the energy markets. So that's you know something of course that is a huge uh, subhead cost subhead for 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 the airlines, but um, I mean at this point in time you know um, it's not just in Nigeria it's 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 a global phenomenon you know um, we regarding the Omicron variant it's difficult to classify it as a shock for us because um, the Nigeria Nigeria has a large footprint, you know, geographical footprint, and you know, I dare say that all of our local play, all of our airlines in Nigeria mostly uh, have, you know, eighty percent of their business, you know, within the, the Nigeria footprint, and um, you know, cross border closures and um, you know. Um, COVID, I mean, due to COVID protocols, are not really, um, they're not really impactful in an airlines, you know, op Nigerian airlines operating, the Nigerian airlines operating playbook, because um, I, I don't mean to more or less um, sound a little bit, um, you know, uh, what's the word here, you know, but the Nigerian airlines are, 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 are local players, David, we, we're not even regional players, so um border closures um i mean intercontinental restrictions are not really um are not really going to be a cause of concern for 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 nigerian players because most of their business um, is here within country okay now wrapping up the conversation there are also fresh bands now that we've seen so far from uh from travelers from nigeria and other african countries to the likes of canada we also have reports of Omicron in the united states do you still see a shift in ground of having testing facilities at the airports as part of uh, intensified uh, safety protocols. Uh, Emirates has already highlighted this in their previous stance. They say we need testing facilities at the airports. Do you see a shift in ground for us in our airport infrastructure? And is that really necessary? We have to take seriously also our testing capacity and vaccinations, wouldn't you say? Besides the issue with, 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 with Emirates, and um, you know the Nigerian government. I have not seen any other, you know, country issue a regulatory requirement for travelers to be tested at the airports before 
you know, boarding or departing for, for, for their country. So, um, I mean, that has only been the case with Emirates. And um, I believe we, even though we are not privy to the conclusive, you know, arguments between or resolutions between the Nigerian government and the Emirati government, but um, I mean, we've not seen the, 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 the most recent has been, you know, Canada, including Nigeria in the list of, um, you know, countries with um, high risk uh, of uh, travelers carrying the, the, the Omicron variant. But um, even in this um, you know, supposed ban by Canada, there was no mention about the need to have or improve you know, testing facilities at the airport. It was just simply an outright ban. Um, so, well, I mean, the more testing capability we have, I mean, the better, of course. And um, as part of vaccinations, you know, I believe that um, the issue here is still, uh, you know, around sensitization. You know, a lot of um, people still feel or do not still trust that, um, I mean, the COVID, COVID is here. A lot of people feel that, you know, the government, I mean, as you know, David, a lot of people are not very trusting of anything coming from the government. So, um, I mean, sensitization for me, vaccine, vaccine availability, of course. I, I think that, of course, if the more testing facilities that are available, yes, the better. But uh, to be honest, the, the current protocols have been being employed by or deployed by by the Nigerian government seems quite sufficient, to be honest. Thank you very much for your time on the show today, Chukere Kachum. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much, David. Well, just before we go now, here are graphic details of selected food price watch for the month of October, as prepared by the National Bureau of Statistics. And on that note, that's it on this edition of Business Week. Many thanks for watching so far. To enjoy the rest of your weekend, I'm David Alabi.